All right, so in this next example, we're gonna learn how to write piecewise functions given the graph. Now, um, in this one, basically what we're doing is we're looking at two things. We're looking at can we identify what the equation of you know the graphs is, and then as well as identify the restrictions, because basically all the piecewise function is you know a two or more functions, and then their domain restriction, or like a rule and the restriction. So on the first example here, we are going to um, zoom in so we can kind of get an idea. So we can see we have a line here. And when we're looking at a line, we're looking at a couple different things. We're looking at the y-intercept here, which is negative 2. So we can say, you know, if we have an equation of line y equals, you know, mx, you know, plus b, we can see that b is going to equal negative 2. So we say b equals negative 2. And then we can see the slope here, kind of using a nice little slope triangle. Say we're going up 2 over 1. I'm sorry, up one, and looks like over one half. So let's kind of use this in integers. So let's go up two, and then looks like it's over one. So my slope is m equals um, two over one. So if I was going to write the equation of this uh, as far as this line, it would be y equals two x minus two. Okay, so let's just call this f of x. We can call it really anything we want to. Uh, we know that we are going to have one rule, which is going to be 2x minus 2. And then my restriction for that is it looks like it's for all values where x is less than positive 1. So I'm just going to say it looks like it's less than or equal to because um, I didn't really do a good job adding my holes here. So um, I guess I'm just going to have to play around with that. Let's see here. Let's make a hole here and let's make this there. And let's put a hole here. No, let's make that solid and let's put a hole here. So sorry about that. I'll go back and fix those equations. So in this example here, um, therefore, since there is a hole there, it's going to be x is less than 0. Now in this next equation here, we can see that this is crossing. It looks like it's at 3, y equals. And since there's the slope is 0, we're just going to look at the y-intercept. Well, if I continue this graph all the way over, we could see that the equation is just going to be you know, y equals 3. Right, that would be the equation of that. But it's only true for values of x that are greater than or equal to 1. So my second equation would be 3, where x is greater than or equal to 1. OK? Um, next thing is we're going to be looking at uh, this example here. So it looks like we have a quadratic. Now, when looking at a quadratic, obviously, we could have some like dilations, you know, some vertical stretch and compress. But just remember, with a quadratic, um, the general shape of the quadratic here is, you know, when we go, uh, let's see, over one, we should up one. And then if we go over two, which actually is off the script, but it looks like this forms the general thing. So as far as like general um, graphs, this looks like this is following over one, up one. So it's going to have roughly the same, um, you know, shape here. So we can call this one, uh, let's actually do this in the correct colors. So this red graph, I would say, now it looks like a quadratic, but it looks like it's been a quadratic that's been shifted one unit to the left. So if I was going to write that in vertex form, I would just say 1 equals x plus 1 squared. And again, it hasn't been moved up or down at all because the original parent graph of a quadratic would be at the, uh, the vertex would be at the origin. So this one's just being shifted one unit to the right. As far as the blue graph, um, and it looks like this one is Another line looks like the slope is a one-to-one -one ratio, so going down one over one. It is a negative slope, and so therefore it'd be like a negative one over one, or just negative x, or just negative one. Um, and then we just need to find the y-intercept, which looks like it's at three. So this equation I would write as negative x, or you could write negative one over one if you want to, plus three. Okay. So now let's go ahead and write them as a piecewise function with their restrictions. So I have the red graph, which is x plus 1 squared. And since I put a dot there that's going to be included, that means that function is going to be for all values that are less than 0, less than or equal to. So the restriction here would be x is less than or equal to 0. The next equation is negative x plus 3. And the restriction for that is for all val x values that are greater than 0, but not equal to, because 0 is only equal in this function, not this one. So I just write x is greater than 0. All right, so the next function just kind of comes into uh, getting you a little bit familiar with 
um, you know, what these functions look like. It looks like it's a hyperbola, but you can see kind of like the shape of the curves is different actually. And if you remember the hyperbola function, like the one over X, that doesn't cross the, uh, that, that doesn't have any intercepts unless there is a restriction. Whereas the only other curve graph that we looked at was the logarithm, which does have a Y intercept at X equals, uh, at X equals one. So I kind of played around with this. I mean, that's kind of a little bit of a tricky one because more likely than not, you're not going to be expected to like recognize these as they look so similar to each other. But the equations in these two is this one is going to be Y equals one over X. And the equation for this one is y equals ln of x. Okay, so again, it's a little bit trickier, everyone. Um, you can see here, though, that this one is going to be the 1 over x is for all values that are less than 0, and the ln of x is for all values that are greater than 0. And notice for both of these functions, the reason why I decided to do these, both these functions have vertical asymptotes at x equals 0, so they're not going to be defined for 0. So when we're writing our piecewise function, We're going to have 1 over x. That's going to be for x values that are less than 0. And then we're going to have ln of x for x values that are greater than 0. So we're not going to use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because neither of these functions are defined um, when x is equal to 0. So that's just kind of a little bit of tutorial. You know, recognize what the parent graphs are and then recognize where that domain is restricted. And now it's on to look at continuity.